Welcome back. If you just joined us to the press, this we're reaching you live from Kaftan's television city here in the nation's capital, Abuja. Now we'll go straight to analyzing the stories that we read out to you. And my guest on the show today is Dr. Lome for he is a media consultant and he is um, a public policy analyst. Great to have you on the show, Dr. Law. Thank you. Been like ages I saw you here. <laughs> <still. laughs> How well uh, I move around a lot. Uh, you know, so, you know, it's um, better to be there. And it didn't happen. Mm. Uh, stay at the place and hear that it happened. It happened. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> All right, viewers, our phone lines are now open. You can call in to make your contributions or ask your questions. Dr. Law, quite a number of stories or uh, headlines yeah. that we need to analyze on. We'll start with the new telegraph. Yeah. Says um Akpabio blames Goza as suicide attack on security intelligence failure. Perhaps on uh, preventive security, senators stress use of modern war facilities. But then CS um, can rather, as Christian Association of Nigeria is saying that uh, we need, they're worried uh, with regards to the return of suicide bombing. And I recall um, Russia TV saying something around their, their, their kick and rider some time ago. I think it was around this week where they talked about um, return of suicide bombing in Nigeria. So I was thinking, okay, is that looking like a bad press? So I wasn't expecting that we also um, agreed to it. So let's get your thoughts in this regard. If Senate, uh, Pabio is saying that um, it's failure of um intelligence uh that, that caused intelligence failure remember we used to have this dilly dally between the chief of um, the service chiefs at one point i thought at some point we actually thought that we're no longer in that um, era where they say no i don't take orders from this and then all of that discrepancies what are your thoughts in all of this yeah the, the lamentation of uh, the senate president his Excellency God's will uh, Obota Pavio. It's understandable. Um, everybody is apprehensive because uh, actually suicide bombing went away for mm. some time. Right. But there was a reason for it. Yeah, you see, um, Boko Haram terrorism started out as uh, um, the kind of uh, Terrorism that was just blossoming, coming into the fray, and they announcing its uh, presence. It was a uh, year to really establish uh, enclaves for itself, particularly in the Lake Chad, the Basin, and the Zambeza Forest. Let me explain what I mean here. You know, Boko Haram terrorism started. Um, let's say officially with the death of uh, Mohammed Yusuf in 2009. Mm. And uh, after that, the sect uh, went uh, under and resurfaced a year after with, uh, attack, with an attack um, in, uh, or, on uh, Bauchi prisons where they freed uh, the prisoners ostensibly to free their own uh, members mm. that were being incarcerated there. They succeeded, and that marked the beginning of uh, Boko Haram uh, terrorism in Nigeria. Since then, till now, they have undergone various uh, metamorphoses, which uh, actually uh, included territory or territorial acquisition. They were able to take up, you know, acquire and dominate Zambiza forest, for example. Okay. And much of uh, the Lake Chad uh, Basin. Mm. What I mean by acquiring and dominating is that they were able to assert their presence. And um, you see, there are things you use to delineate um, an area as governed. So when you say if an, if an area is ungoverned, mm. you are saying um, the government that ought to govern mm. the area does not have control. Right. Right? And Boko Haram has been able to stick its um, uh, presence in Zambiza mm. and its environs, um, Lake Chad Basin environment as well. How were they able to do that? They were able to really drive away federal government presence in those places, military police, and even human beings. Those who stayed paid allegiance to them. They paid taxes to them. They still do. 
Mm, right. They still do. And they have been expanding it further into the, um, the, what you may call occupied uh, spaces in Nigeria. And as they are doing so, they are, they are not only um, dominating those areas, they are even hoisting their flags right. and renaming those, those places, giving them names and appointing governors. Do you see how serious it is? Mm. Now, uh, under the Buhari administration, this reached its apogee. It was as if they had a free reign. Yes, Nigerian military, then the days of uh, General Buratai, our chief of army staff, and then uh, his successor, can't remember his name now, you know, uh, they were able to um, do what I call hit and run, you know, them do a, a, a bit of uh, show of force. And, uh, Did you just say show of force? That, that's the way I said. And, uh, and I'll come to it shortly. You know, you see, the, the, in the process, they were able to, the Boko Haram was able to really assert itself. And they, they escalated, they welcomed uh, other uh, um, terrorism uh, sects from across the world, particularly um, ISIS, you know, uh, Islamic uh, um, uh, um, group in the West, in West Africa you call ISIS. They didn't stop there. They were able to bring in Al-Qaeda from the Maghreb and then the splinter groups from all the variegated terrorist organizations you find in Mali, in Niger, in Burkina Faso, they all found their ways into Nigeria. Convergent. There was oh, wow. a convergence of more than four to five, perhaps a dozen terrorist organizations welcomed by Boko Haram to boost their number, boost their fighting uh, force, even resources. Despite the fact that we have clo um, um, borders that were closed at some point. We lost control of those borders. That's the point I'm making. We lost control of those borders. And so, they now started operating freely. They were able to occupy the, uh, the very large swaths of land in, uh, in, in Nigeria. I've mentioned Zambiza. I've mentioned the uh, um, the, the basin and all that. And they pushed, they be pushing, they were able to push into the Kaduna forest. Oh, wow. And they are pushing down south as we speak. Now, there are was a change of government in uh, May 2023. Uh, President Ebola Amir Tinubu took charge and decided to change the dynamics. So the military, you know, uh, got a kind of, uh, because the, the, the military and the police, they are always looking at the body language of uh, their commander in chief. The, Tinubu means a uh, business. You know, as far as this uh, Boko Haram something is concerned, terrorism generally, banditry, all of it. So the marching order is get them off our back, clear them off, get just get that done, and the sooner you do that, the better. The order is very clear, so you can see that there is a renewed impetus on the part of uh, the Nigerian military. But so are you saying that it was different from the directive they got from the previous government? It, it, obviously so. Obviously so, because, you know, Buhari himself had a kind of sympathy for Boko Haram uh, uh, terrorism. You know, maybe not the entirety, because B Boko Haram terrorism at a point broke into two. Uh, Abawane led a faction, and, uh, and Shekau led a faction. I believe that, uh, you know, the, the government of the day was sympathetic to one of, the, one of that. So... You know, let me tell you something. Doctor, Doctor, one minute. Let's quickly take this call. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Tell us your name and where you're calling us from. Yeah, Raimi from Abuja. Raimi from Abuja. It's great to hear from you. Go ahead. Yeah, good morning to you and good morning to the great man in the house. Good morning, my brother. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, yesterday, I tried to call because I watched uh, one of your programs earlier. All right. I want to combine the two issues together. Yes. The, the problem we have in Nigeria is the fact that we are finding it difficult to trust our government. 
about uh, Nigerians are not being uh, loyal to their country and all of that. The people at the forefront should be the best loyal people, which they are not. You know, if I see what you wear, I design with uh, blue and dark and uh, sky blue and all of that. But if I keep telling you that what you are wearing is red, mm. and you know what you are wearing is not red, then as your leader, I keep telling you is red, you begin to doubt it. We know things are not well, and we are telling our government, do it this way, or change your tactics to whichever you want to, but not the way you are going. That what they are doing is the right thing. How can we trust such people? The, the professor explained about our economy yesterday and took much more on our own. That is the fact. Right. Now, Dr. Law is telling us what is happening in our security structure. These are the facts. Are our leaders dead? Are they not hearing? Are they not seeing? They are, but they don't want to because what we ask them to do. Benefit them, but they rather do what we benefit them. All right. Please, what I just want to drop this morning is this. I hate when I hear people say we are not praying for government or we are not praying for our leader. I think it's not true. Maybe we should change our prayer. Let's ask God to bless them if they are doing well and do the need. <laughs> All right, Raimi, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Your call and your contribution is well taken and appreciated. Please go ahead with your Yes, uh, the, you, it's the same frustration mm. uh, that the uh, majority of Nigerians are expressing that he too has expressed. You see, uh, and even the Senate president has also expressed. We are all frustrated in this whole thing. Two things I want to quickly uh, run, uh, say as a way of rounding off this so you can look at other issues. One is the very nature of, uh, of uh, the, um, uh, what you may call uh, terrorism itself. Mm. You know, if from the basic definition of terrorism as an attempt by a group to compel government of the day uh, through violence and uh, any other action that can compel the government of the day to do their bidding, that, you know, once arms comes into any resistance, between a sect and the government, it is technically a, a terrorism uh, act, you know, and the perpetrators are terrorists. Mm. That's the way we define it in uh, social psychology and generally also. Now, terrorism is asymmetric in nature. What do I mean by that? It's not uh, a positional thing, the way I am facing you here now. So, it's a very difficult form of warfare for the military. And that is not the way the military is trained. The military is trained for positional warfare. Okay. Positional warfare mean here that you, the, the enemy is there. The enemy is defined. You know who the enemies are. And because you know who the enemies are, you can define them, you can frame them, you can plan, you can know uh, their strengths and then be able to engage. There are even rules of engagement. Okay. But when it comes to fighting terrorism, it's a different ballgame. So are we, are we facing an asymmetric warfare here in Nigeria? Yes, that's what we're facing. If and we the are, military are not trained. The, and the military is not fully trained oh. to, 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 to really go into fight against terrorists and terrorism. It's a very serious issue. And it's part of the reason why they are not um, winning the war as... Um, uh, as fast as many Nigerians have actually anticipated, right? It's because of the nature of the engagement. It's asymmetric. What that means is that the enemy you are fighting may be within you. Right. Now, from what I told you earlier, um, one man's uh, terrorist is another man's uh, freedom fighter. Mm. In other words, once you are dealing with uh, terrorism, even those who are policy makers, even those who are policy drivers and implementers may have sympathy for those you call terrorists. Right. I True. talked about the, the disposition of the former president, right? Mm. And it's a very major issue. Because if you remember, before he became president, Buhari made it very clear that the fight against uh, terrorism was a fight against the North. Mm. He wasn't saying what Jonathan was doing as a very serious 
patriotic attempt to stop the destruction of the North. He didn't see it from that perspective until these people dug in. If you recall, under Jonathan, there was even a petition by a group in the North against General Azubike Hejirika, the mm. then chief of army staff. Right. Petition to ICC that if Hejirika should be tried from the North that was being destroyed. Do you see where we are? So that's why I say that one man's a terrorist is another man's a freedom, freedom fighter. fighter. Right. If, if the Northern leaders that were writing that kind of letter when uh, General Hejirika, you know, rounded off most of these guys somewhere in Baga and wanted to eliminate them, if they had backed up Hejirika at that time, we wouldn't be talking about terrorism today. But then with this um, recent Bruno um, terror attack, you have people like um, Atiku Abubakar who came out to state that um, the president is not even fighting it as much as he Good. should. You know, and then SCF is saying the same thing too. Uh, because because we're opening our eyes now. We woke up late in the day. Oh, wow. You know, when they had already dug in, I told you they started from a, uh, a small enclave around Lake Chad Basin spread to Zambiza. And from Zambiza, they have pushed for them. They have occupied uh, uh, the Kaduna Forest and they are pushing south. They are here in Abuja. Because if you, if you do psychological analysis of uh, the kind of crimes that are committed in Abuja, they are pure terrorism. You know, we are not talking about armed robbery here. We are talking about a group of armed men walking into your house and taking you away. Mm. Do you understand that? It has never happened before in the history of Nigeria. These are what I call uh, mutations or mutative uh, manifestations of the same of the same incidents of terrorism in Nigeria. And we need to understand this before we can even know how to deal with it. Right. Another thing I want to quickly bring in also, as a way of concluding, is that, see, Nigeria appears to be too much in a hurry to end terrorism. And that is make, forcing the military to commit too many mistakes. Are you saying after over 10 years, 13, 14 years still counting? Let me give you an, hurry? I don't know of any any terrorist group in the world that was defeated in less than 20 years. You can check the records. I don't know of any. You, so if that is, if, the, if you take 20 years as an average uh, time you need to deal with these people, it gives you time to really plan. You need to work, you need to set up. I told you that the military is not trained um, for this kind asymmetric of war. asymmetric warfare. It's mm. not their conventional, it's not their training. So you can't even judge the capacity, the delivery, the performance of the Nigerian uh, military based on uh, what they have done with uh, terrorism because it's not their training. They are just going, trying to get into it. So is it possible that the new set or crop of uh, military men that are going in for training now get trained, yes, retrained they, yes, for they have to be, warfare? Those who are there already need to be retrained and those who are coming in need to be trained in this kind of warfare okay that's the point the kind of thing i'm talking about and for me i also think that the nigerian uh, military need to consider setting up a special force specifically for terrorism because the bulk of your fighting force is not made for it mm. so why don't you why don't you set up a special crack team of 10 to twenty thousand men and women both retired and serving, who want to go into this? Challenge them. Give the special package. If I were the chief of army staff, that's the kind of thing I would propose. Then I need a 20-man team to work on this. Mm. A minimum of 20, of a minimum of, of 1 million a month, life assurance, special training. Take them away. Train these people. Do you understand that? So, is, so, so does it mean that, um, sorry I had a ball in, does it mean that the lack of um, benefits, salaries, good salaries are also part of the reason why you have this um, obviously, lack of lustre? Obvi obviously, obviously so. V.I. Lenin, um, the, uh, of uh, the Bolshevik uh, uh, revolution in Russia, so he made very one fundamental statement. He said that soldiers march on their stomach, not uh -huh. on their feet. Right. That is motivation, welfare. So, what is the welfare package? 
of our fighting force like? You take random regular soldiers and deploy them to this? You don't even pay them well? I saw a video of a soldier that got a pass to go visit the family. His family. I was, I was going to talk about that. He, he was paid. He was, he 50, was paid. Do you understand that? Mm. You know, and the, 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 the one-way uh, transport mm. fare was, uh, was 35000 Right. And he said there was no way he could go. He had to so go back. Turn back. A soldier like that, tell me oh. if you were him. So that's why I said that you need to really set up a special force. Set up special packages and look there are many retired soldiers even generals that will be angry enough if there is enough motivation to go and challenge these people but you need to you, you need to plan their families for them all right there must be life assurance hmm. there must be special pay and none of none of the teams, you know, if you if you get the, the twenty thousand, for example, you break them into four, maybe the, each of them will fight for a quarter and return for you know debriefing and everything. It sort of recuperate, mm. recharge, mm. and be ready to take over from another batch. You need to plan this seriously. It's not a regular warfare. And that was why the military, their desperation, they are now offering a very dangerous policy policy prescription and offer to the terrorists what you call operation uh, safe corridor that's what the military is doing the military is offering the terrorists the opportunity to come out mm. get rehabilitated and get mm. reintegrated mm. into Rated. the society into the society for merely claiming that they have repented so where you know, where are the psychological tests that will validate you know there is what we call the test of malingering in uh, forensic psychology is a mm. test battery that we use to determine one who is lying. Right. Uh, are the military, are they really deploying this kind of a uh, test to ensure that these uh, terrorists that are claiming that they have, that they have repented, have truly repented? I'm right. not aware of that. I'm not saying they're not doing that, but as a psychologist who is uh, professionally involved, I haven't met many of uh, our professional colleagues, particularly the senior ones, who ought to have been involved in this, saying that they are doing this and because ordinarily they will be they will be bouncing it off um the the, 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 the group, the the, the the association, the members, mm. and that this is what they are doing, mm. this is what they are deploying, and uh, their newer approaches and stuff. That's it is not going on. All right, Dr. Law, because you've um, mentioned quite a lot of things, let's, let's bef before we leave security matter, if you can help us in two minutes. When you just uh, talked about um, test of malingering, I remember the first time I heard that word. That was when I was in, um, I think I was in primary school, when I went to, uh, my, my parents took me to the hospital and the doctor said, oh, she's just malingering. She's, yes. Take her back to school. <laughs> so uh, now, let's, let's talk about two things, two questions I'm, I'm going to ask, and I'd like you to unbound them in one breath, if you can help us in the next three minutes. Still on insecurity. Now, you talked about um, how it's an asymmetric warfare and all of that. The, I remember this Monday, some, some of the headlines talked about how the U.S. have promised to help Nigeria fight this insecurity mm. and ensure that this um, terrorism bombing and all those suicide bombing doesn't come back. And I remember talking to my guest who said, this current um, administration is playing to the card of the u.s and then he he was trying to mix all that is happening with u.s trying to give something with one hand and returning taking it back with the two hands not even with one hand again do you actually see any truth in that that's one on the side and secondly we'll go to the southeast where southeast leaders step up moves to free namdekano even though some uh, in some part we heard that um president uh, former president ulusha gobasanjo has lent his voice to it but i saw a particular most of the um headlines saying that he did not discuss with the southeast governors on that regard and then um um senator abaribe has said namdekano has accepted all of um, the conditions and he's ready to be freed some people say that if namdi kanu is freed that will be the end of southeast insecurity do you agree to this dr law uh, i would want to um uh, touch uh, briefly the first question right you see if you go to borno state you will see 
you see dozens of uh, international uh, NGOs, foreign mm. NG NGOs, mm. Mm. right? Right. They have been there for the past 10 years, counting. Yeah. What are they doing there? Do you understand that? You, uh, it has it become an industry now that they have to be in Nigeria, uh, you know, monitoring uh, uh, um, Boko Haram uh, or Ragvel for one to two decades? Why? Mm. So, that lends credence to what that person, that uh, uh, guess you had, was trying to say. I saw it myself. Do you understand that? So, I saw a bit of it. Too many of them. Now, it, for example, Rutas. Rutas is as if they, you know, they have made the uh, 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 Boko Haram terrorism in Nigeria their business. Do you understand that? Mm. That is one level of it. Then you look at what uh, uh, the U.S. Uh, has as a disposition towards terrorism in Nigeria. We are aware of the fact that U.S. was private to, you know, the formation of certain. Uh, terrorist organizations across the world. Dr. Law, please hold your thoughts. That, that's a fact. Hold, hold your thoughts on that. We're going to continue from there. Chief Arrow from Kaduna, good morning. Good morning. I'm on your night. Very well, thank you. Go yeah, ahead. You have one minute. About the discussion. Right. About the, yeah. I'm first about the insecurity. You see, um, uh, the Mohammed Yusuf, from Boko Haram, he said something. He said the world that is yet to start will continue for a very long time. Mohammed Yusuf in 2009. You see, it looks as if that Sambisa forest should actually be turned to another thing. And people Sambisa forest should be relocated so that they take full control of that of that place. Then let me go to Kano. You see, the problem with Nigeria is that I don't know why they are still holding Kano. Somebody like Asare Dokubo, who was having some militia, and you switch him working freely. So I just don't understand why Nigeria government is holding Kano. Is it that there is some documentary I think inside a file that Buhari has documented that that is making Kinibu not to release him? Let's release him so that they will be free in the, 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 the be freedom in this country. After all, agitation is not a crime. A lot of the country they agitate. So agitation is not a crime. Let them release him there so that there'll be there'll, there'll be freedom and peace. God All bless right. our country in Nigeria. God bless Thank you, you. Chief Farrell yeah. from Kaduna. Yeah, what you have said, let me um chip in something there. Uh, you know, he is very right. One of the major preparations that I was prescribing, physical retaking of Zambiza Forest is one of it. So relocating Zambiza, like he said. Listen, is that, is it, is listen, eh? Zambiza and much of the Lechad uh, Basin area, right, have been taken by the terrorists. Mm. You have to retake these places physically. And how do you do that? And that is what he is saying. You need to relocate all the communities around these uh, places. Okay. So that you can now go into what you call saturation bombing. You use your air force to clear this place bit by bit as you are clearing you the, the the infantry is moving in the police is coming in every you know you take zambiza forest no matter the stretch of it mm. you must take it you know why they are using the place as a substrate that is where they camp they have families they have communities that is where they train that is where they, they, they arm and they arm. That is where they launch their operations. So if you don't disrupt that, you will not be able to end the fight against the terrorism in Nigeria. But then, if you remember, sorry I had to put in again. If you remember, the former governor of Kaduna State, El Rofai, talked about this massive bombardment of terrorist enclave, which will definitely cause um, ISIS coming to break down the necks of Nigerians. ISIS. That is the issue here. ISIS is part of uh, Boko Haram now. They have been fighting. The, no, no, fight. sorry, I meant the International Criminal Court. We, rather. Don't, we don't give a damn about them anymore. Because what are they doing now? Ah. Yes, you have to, he has got to that point. Where Nigeria will have to talk about Nigeria first. You know, this, this idea of uh, um, uh, uh, trying to pan that to the whims and caprices of the international community is the reason why we are where we are. Even in our economy, 
debate on wood institutions, remove subsidy, float your naira. So where are we? So you need to learn to understand what to take and what not to take. And of course, the international community will get worried if you carry out such massive bombardment mm. and uh, there is heavy civilian uh, casualty. Right. It even happened in Kaduna mm. recently, yeah. you know, and the community was uh, bombed mm. in the process. That is why I cite, in line with what the last caller said also, that you need to relocate these communities. Are you saying that if a, a volcanic e eruption uh, uh, occurs in Zabisa Forest, the people there will not uh, relocate? Ah. What is going on now is worse than a volcanic eruption. So you need to engage physically, you know, ki kinetically and not kinetically. All these things will have to be brought together. Then you now face, when you are doing this, the political angle of it will have to be dealt with. What you call the political, the political dimensions of terrorism. How do they get their funds? Hmm. If a senator, for example, right, says uh, take a uh, ten million naira to buy f to buy ram, huh? will it be there to be sure that you are purchasing a ram with it? <laughs> Do you understand that? Mm. So there are indirect ways that this funding has been going on. The, how do they get money to pay their fighting force? Because they live in families, and these are uh, fighting uh, 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 soldiers. In quote. Of, uh, the, of, uh, of, the, of uh, the terrorism uh, sites have families to feed. They are paid. Pay engagement. Hmm. Do you understand that? How does the money come? That's the political angle. Yes. You need to face it. You need to block. Because if, uh, if you cut off an artery that supplies the blood to an organ, the organ, the organ dies naturally. Right. So it, it has to be a multi faceted, multi-dimensional engagement before you can get results. Then on, on, the, on the Southeast, you know, the Southeast, we have been crying for the past two, three years that the non decano should be released. All right, please cl quickly give us one minute. Let's take this call. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning. I came from Lagos. Good to hear from you. Go ahead. You have one uh, minute remaining. Thank you. And hello to Mr. Love. Good morning, my brother. Yeah, good morning, sir. Uh, I actually, I, I love your analysis. Uh, I always love your analysis, even though we have some areas where we need it. <laughs> it's we natural. Yeah. We should like, uh, disagree in some areas yeah. now. Exactly, <laughs> to agree. Yes. So, um, over the issue of uh, uh, counting on United States, I've never for once agree that the United States is a true democratic state. Smart. Yes. I agree with you the on that also. That, yes. Look, based on what you slightly mentioned there, that uh, they finance some terrorists themselves. See, there are so many examples that you bring out that you disqualify the United States as a democratic state in this world. Even the issue of Gaza stuff is one example. That's not a lot. Even the war they are fighting in Ukraine and they are supposed to support their giving to Ukraine, they are not supporting Ukraine simply because uh, they are supporting democracy. They are just using Ukraine to help to sustain their own hegemony. So I don't want to go international talk. But um, internationally, there is no way we will not relate with them. But the issue is that, uh, like you said, Nigeria should not over rely on them because America can never give you anything without, you will give you one thing and take 20 for it. I prefer all counting of even on Russia or China. That's the fact. See, in this world, I'm so sorry to say, the truth of the matter is that there is no anything like democracy. The democracy that has brought to this world, even though the theory is fantastic, is igniting, in practice, even by those that that from, uh, that, that modernize the United States and the UK, even the UK is not originally in Greece. All right. They themselves, they cannot say they are democratic because they are democratic when it is benefiting them. All right. When it is not benefiting them, then democratic democracy is not working. So All right. thank you, okay. that they are sending to our country, like in the from those that you say they stay too long, some of them are spies. Mm. They take information and forward it to them. This is why Russia will have to scrutinize so many people. 
from first way onward. Thank you, Akim. All right. Thank you so much. Your point is well taken. If we are not so careful, Nigeria will go a lot further than Nigeria because now they are themselves from this western country. All right. Thank you so much. God bless you too. I came from Lagos. Good morning. Yeah, beautiful morning, Annabelle. Good morning, sir. You are on to SMD from Kano. SMD from Kano. It's been a while I heard from you. How are you doing? Sure. Well, I'm doing pretty well. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning once again, sir. Thank you. Good very morning, my brother. Good morning, morning, my brother. Go uh, ahead, please. Uh, uh, time will not permit me to go into details. There are so many uh, headlines to uh, read. But mm. let me particularly look on this uh, issue of this uh, uh, illicit uh, weapons and the drugs. Uh, you see, we've been always advocating on the government to review our uh, foreign policy. You understand? This uh, review of uh, foreign, our foreign policy will make uh, a long uh, way to, uh, to Nigeria. And uh, honestly speaking, so many things will not be you know, uh, done the way they are done. And uh, I don't think it's, uh, Nigeria is a sovereign nation. For God's sake, how could somebody, how could somebody, just go and then order this kind of weapons and drugs to the country. After when we know the implication of the drugs and also the uh, the ammunition in the country. Look at where we are today for security issues. For God's sake, this is not something that we kept under the carpet. The government must come out, and the international issue, the, 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 the diplomatic issue, has to uh, take its position mm. because we cannot keep on moving this way. This thing will not happen in the United States, it will not happen in England, it will not happen in Australia, Canada, or Germany, or France. So how could Nigeria just keep silent on this issue? It is something that we don't be reading on paper. We mm. need to see action on this issue. Right. We need to see action. We need, the government must, raise, must, must take up to, to, to start at least. How many, for how long shall we remain in this present predicament? We're talking about insecurity, but look at what is going on. Mm. Who ordered the who, who, who ordered, who the, ordered the it? Drugs? Right. Who ordered the drugs? All right. And what purpose? Thank you very much. I remain SMD from Kano. I wish you. SMD from Kano, thank you so much for calling. I wish I could actually leave, but the calls keep good coming. Problem. Okay. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Tell us your name and where you're calling us from. Thank you. It's Raimi from Abuja. Just a quick drop, please. Raimi, you have 30 seconds. Yes, I will not spend up the that. You see, what I just want to say is this Nigerian should start to begin to be a Nigerian. Start to begin to be a Nigerian. Let's forget about UN, ICC, whatever. They would never help us. If I have my way into government, I will flush all of them out of Nigeria. They are only extracting from us. They are not helping us. Right. Find out how many years have they been in Nigeria. What impact have they made in our life? Mm. Thank you. Raimi, thank you so much for your contribution. Please go ahead with yes. your thoughts. We're talking yeah. about the Southeast. Yes, I, I, I want to conclude uh, the Southeast before I address uh, some of the things they raised. Mm. You see, we have been crying. Um, now the country was taking in again huh? the extraordinary rendition that is a government kidnap of a, a citizen from another country. That mm. is what they call a, 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 a extraordinary rendition, mm. right? I, you know, the, the process was criminal. There's no doubt about it, okay? Even though Bin Danyako, uh, before um, who's a court, uh, he has been standing trial. Would you mind how he was brought back to her court? Her, her concern is that I want to see you here. Do you understand that? Even the Supreme Court condemned it, but the Supreme Court said, look, the trial has to continue. Now, this is a political problem. All political problems must be resolved politically. Okay. That was what we saw with the case of uh, 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 Sunday Iboho, right? Mm. In uh, Southwest. Mm. We saw it uh, with uh, the militants in the Niger Delta. Mm. Asari Dokubo, you know, uh, Tompolo, Boilo, and all that, under uh, President uh, Obarumosa Yaradoa. That was one of his uh, major legacies. Using uh, uh, um, 
uh, some interventions to resolve what other otherwise would have lingered and culminated into what you may what, what could be a civil war. But then some people will say that Namdi Kano's case is different because he was calling for a whole nation, which ag mm -hmm. aggravated. I understand. The I understand those dimensions, and I don't want to even go into that. You know, I saw some of uh, those uh, videos where uh, he purportedly made some calls. But in this era of uh, uh, social media, uh, artificial intelligence manipulations, I don't know what to take anymore. Because I have seen a video where uh, 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 President, uh, uh, um, President Tidubo was pleading with the uh, P2B. To just <laughs> let him be president. <laughs> you know, do you understand that? That was artificial intelligence and manipulation. Uh, so, until you prove all those things, you really don't uh, draw conclusions based on them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. If because you and I know that Tinubu never begged the P2B anywhere, anytime, but there is a <laughs> video, and I'll post to you. So, you can, for you to see the power of artificial AI. intelligence. Mm. So, I don't know. I'm not saying that that is the case with his uh, own, mm. but I am saying it is not an impossibility. Let us work on uh, what will achieve for us an enduring peace, a peaceful Nigeria. Without peace, there will be no, there will be no progress, there will be no development. Particularly the Southeast. If you recall, about four years ago, the Southeast was the safest zone in Nigeria. Mm. But today, the Southeast is a home of an uh, unknown uh, gunman, right? Mm. Even yesterday, there were still killings. Up to this yesterday, in the southeast. So you have about five groups that have, uh, you know, created this insecurity you have in the southeast. You have the unknown gunman, right? You have a section of the uh, IPOB that mm. is saying until you bring out now the mm. there must be sit at home, mm. and all that. You have a group of a uh, even the federal government itself, what you call the deep state, you know, the concept of the deep state. If, for example, you kill an officer, you don't expect his commander to go home and sleep. You mm. will get even. So we expect that part of the, what is happening in the South is that you call insecurity is reprisal from the federal forces who have lost some of the officers and men. So do you think that Nnamdi Kanu still has a grip on all of these people that, that she is just where, That is where the problem is. You know, because those who claim that Nnamdi Kanu uh, must be free, and until he is free, that they will not stop, are uh, at the core of what you call insecurity in the, so in the Southeast. Others are uh, play from the fringes, like uh, the Yahoo boys, ritual uh, killing and the uh, kidnapping. Yes, very serious. They are also going in. But I believe that these ones are secondary. They are utilizing the smooth screen created by the fight between uh, a faction of uh, Biafra agitators and, uh, the, and the federal forces to create further insecurity and further criminality. Right. So if you bring out now the canal, you will secure one thing. You will be able to, dis to disprove that now the canal, his incarceration is the reason there is insecurity or it is not the reason there is insecurity. I don't know if you understand what yeah. I'm saying. Because you asked one fundamental question here now. Are we sure that now the canal still has a grip? We can't tell until he comes out. Okay. And we will help him to have a grip because he has to really have a grip. I believe that, of course, there, the, there is already a faction, you know, in the whole thing uh, with the, the one that calls himself uh, Simon Eba, declaring himself the prime minister of the Biafra government in exile. You know, so it, it, when somebody, when an American comes out, will he be able to really, you know, go go away, just walk away? Do you understand that? Mm. We believe that he will walk away, even if he does not walk away. The rest of Ndibo will back an American to really clear the path to peace. All right. That is one thing I am sure will happen. All right. I will support him to any extent I can. To ensure that he restores peace to the southeast, because without peace in the southeast, there will be no peace. There will be no development in the area. Right. And let me tell you, as we speak now, our elites, our business moguls, our captains of industry, 
are living in droves. Many of them operate even from Asaba and mm. come into all the time in the morning and go back. In it, it, that is, 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 uh, mm. it, it, it's an umbra that is suffering it. Mm. It is the southeast that is suffering it. The sit at home that happens every Monday and has continued to happen cost you know it costs the southeast in in billions of naira. Mm. It, it, it has been calculated by all some right. economists. All right, Doctor. So these are some of the things that will be gained when the Nam Kano is released. All right. So we uh, are for it. The, the sooner it happens, the better. Uh, our time is fast, but if you can help me in one minute, I'm going to ask you because they always say that the, um, most times the southeasterners are always united yet to be divided. I remember talking to a security um, um, expert who um, said that. Um, uh, you see the Igbo, especially the southeastern governors, always coming together to say, let Namdi Kanu be free. But some of them are still scared of the fact that they have skeletons in their cupboard. So if Namdi Kanu is freed, it means that he's going to open or uncover all of this uh, how, skeletons. How will he do that? According to him, he just um, stated that, he, he, uh, I'm not going to mention the names that he mentioned, but he said... Um, most of them that have um, something to do with insecurity in their state, when Namdi comes, okay. is going to fight that insecurity. And we all know that insecurity also has its merchandise. Some people are gaining from it. So yeah. it, they know that it's going to be bad business for them. Crisis uh, entrepreneurs. Do you that, agree with that? It? That's what we call them. There's an element of that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because, um, you know, the whole thing, is a mixed a bag of so many factors, right? That is why I identified as many as five groups. You know, so it's not just a matter of your agitation, mm -hmm. you know, precipitating insecurity in uh, the south. It's just a factor, just a part of it. All right. The federal government is also involved in it. And what I think should happen is, eh, even when the kind of comes out, like I said, the rest of the Igbo masses and population will back him. And when they do, once he then once he has that strength that he is being backed, and the, the, the assignment is one and straight to clear insecurity in the southeast, the federal government will have a relief. Mm. I expect right. that I expect that that renewed understanding between the uh, Biafra agitators and the federal government will lead to a better impetus, better engagement, because the military and the police will be working. Mm. We'll be working together with them because they are, they are pursuing the same goal. All right. But if you do not, if you do not uh, bring him out, these uh, criminal elements will continue to give him as an excuse to continue to perpetrate what they are perpetrating against uh, the southeast uh, people and uh, the southeast economy. It has right. to stop. All right, our, our time is fast. Been quite a number of things we needed to talk about. The customs intercept 1.6 billion naira military wares that um, um, SMD from Kano talked about. You just begin to wonder who like, exactly oh, no, we no. want to fight insecurity. For, for, yeah. Forget it. You <laughs> see, I told you about uh, I told you about uh, one man's a terrorist. Uh, He's another uh, man's freedom that fighter. Is, that's what this whole thing is about. And crisis entrepreneurs. Yeah. See, let me tell you, there is no container that enters Nigeria that does not have an owner. Mm. Right. And uh, and of course, country of origin. Mm. Yeah, you know, do you understand mm. that? These papers will tell you who the person is. Ah. And again, why even when you know what the container contains, why intercept it at the wolf? Yeah. Why did you just wait? Mm. Wait and follow the trailer to the destination. Why don't you do that? You know, so there is this uh, this exuberance, you know, and when such a catcher is said, the next thing is the uh, world uh, press, conference press conference to show that you are working. It's not how to get these things done. And again, right, finally, finally, our major problem is that apart from the fact that the investigations are should there is no there is no consequence, there is no what you call closure mm. on cases. No, you have told us, what right? You have been telling us in the last 10 to 20 years, and you haven't told us how you concluded those other cases. So, what is the guarantee that this uh, fresh uh, catcher of arms in a uh, canoe by customs will not end up the way the rest of, uh, of the catchments have uh, ended up? So, right. if, if, uh, if uh, they have not been able to bring to trial, to conviction, to imprisonment, to closures, many, many, many cases like that in Nigeria. I hardly read and listen to such things anymore because right, it's just for the optics, 
for what uh, the people would say. Let the people say they are working. Dr. Thank Lord. you, you are working. <laughs> keep, keep, up, keep, up, keep, up, keep up the good work. <laughs> Dr. Law, therefore, all right, I, like I said, quite a number of stories, but just 30 seconds, Dr. Okay. Law, 30 right. seconds. Let's yep. talk about um, um, the increased electricity tariff. We're ah. still talking about the <laughs> fact that you increased it and you increased it. You ha it looks like throw it at uh, the gumdrop to throw it at people's what faces. Wrong, what is wrong is wrong. When they privatized the power sector in the way and manner they did, we told them it was not going to work. You know, as, as, as uh, a, 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 an industrial relations uh, uh, expert, I know what privatization means. There are three things. You are bringing in expertise, you are bringing in funds, you are bringing in better management. These are the three reasons. But it is the same federal government that privatized, that has been given bailout funds to the same people that were supposed to bring in money. Ah. Do you see the beginning now? Okay. And they also didn't want to totally privatize. The power sector is broken into three. Mm. You have generation, you have trans, uh, transmission, transmission, you have a uh, distribution. Yeah. Federal government is holding the middle, that transmission, 100% and refuse to give way. Dr. Love, before thank you, know, you so, so much. What you, you, do? You, you, you generate, mm. you generate, the, 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 the distributors will refuse to take. Why? Because you are paying them fixed charges. So all they need to do is to add more money to the few people that are that are subscribing to, to electricity mm. and they smile to bank. You you know, any alteration, any increase in in a tariff must be commensurate to the a, a greater quantity of a power they pumped into the grid. All right. So now now that we are here to discharge if, if more than a five thousand megawatts of electricity, what is the justification? What for the for, for the increase in tariff what, is the what have they brought what have they brought to the table ah. the NERC, the NERC, the, the electricity the regulatory agency is doing no job nothing it is there on the side of the oppressors of the nigerian masses that was why they allowed this uh, what what they call band a b c d to z i don't even know Band the band. You don't know the band that you're going to quit I belong <laughs> because you know I, I I don't get light for two three days. So which band is that? <laughs> Maybe band E <laughs> or band F, like um, one of my uh, electricity experts called it the bandits. <laughs> band F or bandless. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Love, thank you so much. It's been a wonderful time. It's always a pleasure having these talks with you. Thank you. The pleasure is mine once I'm in town. All right. Thank you so much, viewers. We would have gone straight to our social media corner, but our time is fast spent. This is all that we can take. I promise you, we'll definitely bring you those funny videos next time on the press. Thank you so much for tuning in, and to all those who called, we appreciate your call, and we do not take your viewership for granted. Keep watching Kaftan Television. My name is Annabel Oji. God bless you and yours, and God bless the fellow.